We welcome you to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Church. The entrance hymn is number 291, Open Wide the Doors to Christ. Let him shepherd you. Welcome him into your heart, that your love be true. For Christ is the light, and Christ is the way, and Christ is the love who loves you. Show to all his face, live for others as he lived, filled with truth and praise. For Christ is the light, and Christ is the way, and Christ is the love who loves you. Incline your ear and hear me, O Lord, and hear me. O God, save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for unto you do I cry all the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, Lord God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive 
my breath. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot, to be a place of honor for his, pe for his family. The word of the Lord. Exalted, yet the lowly he sees. 
and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given any, the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. On this 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time, the Church places before us the Gospel passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16. For many of us, a familiar passage. And yet a passage 
like all of scripture, that we would do very well to pause and to reflect and to allow the Lord to help us to deepen our relationship with him. Our Lord <clears throat> takes his disciples to Caesarea Philippi. Notice that our Lord is in control of everything that happens in his public ministry. He chooses to go to Caesarea Philippi. There is a very high mountain there. There's also a pool of water at the bottom of it. Pagans worship there. Pagans thought that this pool of water was the entrance to Hades, to hell, to the netherworld. There was some pagan worship that went on there. And Jesus asked his disciples, who do all of the people say that I am? <laughs> 2,000 years ago, the first Gallup poll, who do people say that I am? All kinds of responses came back. Elijah, prophet, the Messiah. But Jesus wanted to go deeper. He didn't care about the Gallup poll. He didn't care about what all of them said. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asks you and me, that same question, not just today at Mass, but every single day of our life, sometimes many times throughout our day, who do you say that I am? How do you and I respond to that? Much to pray about, much to reflect on. Peter, Simon Peter, answered by saying, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus very clearly and directly said, Simon, that didn't come from your mind. That didn't come from your human talents or skills. That came from God. And so you are the rock on which I will build my church. And the gates of the netherworld, the gates of Hades, shall not prevail against you. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That phrase, the keys, would lead all of the Israelites who heard Jesus say those words back to our first reading from the prophet Isaiah, where Isaiah is speaking to one of the persons in charge in the kingdom of the Israelites, Shebna. Shebna, the master of the palace. Notice that Isaiah is writing sometime in the 600s, 500s BC, maybe 700s BC. He's writing a number of centuries after King David. In David's time, David had established God through David had established a kingdom. It was God's kingdom, and God put David in charge. And David set up kind of a vice president in the kingdom, a second in command. And that was the master of the palace. And that office that comes from God, through the Israelites, through King David, that office that comes continued down hundreds of years 
until we get to the time of the Isaiah the prophet when he says, Shebna, the master of the palace is not doing what he should do. He's not caring for the kingdom he's thinking of himself. Shebna's out of here. I'm going to replace him with Eliakim. Notice that God, through the prophet Isaiah, did not say, we're getting rid of this office. This office is corrupt. It's out of here. We're just going back to the king. The office, the position continues. And though the person in that office wasn't doing what that person should do, God, through Isaiah, replaced that person with Eliakim. And he gives him the keys, the keys of the kingdom. And so Jesus gives to Peter the keys of the kingdom. And not just to St. Peter, but to all of the popes, all of the Holy Fathers who have succeeded St. Peter down through the centuries. He gives the keys to them. Those keys are the power, the authority to teach here on earth what Jesus taught while he was here, what Jesus continues to teach and lead the church from his place in heaven. Holy Father has that office. There have been down through the centuries Holy Fathers, Popes, who have not lived very good moral lives. But God has not destroyed or taken away the office. The office continues. The office to which Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom of heaven. It's important to reflect he gave the keys. It says plural. And in Christian art, it's often been described or shown as a gold key and a silver key. The care of the spiritual and the temporal needs of the church, the spirit, care of spiritual things and material things, the Holy Father is in charge of that because God gave him that power. As we ponder that and reflect on that, we ask for the Lord's grace to help us to attune our mind, attune our heart to Jesus, to his words, to his call and his question to each of us each and every day, many times a day, who do you say that I am? How do you respond? How do I respond? How do we respond in our words, in what we say? How do we respond in what we don't say? How do we respond with our actions, what we do, and what we don't do? Because we choose not to do that. Because we know that Jesus is our Lord, our God, and our Savior. We want to put him first, and we want him to be our Lord, our God, our Savior. Not just of heaven, not just of earth, but of my life. God is in control of my life and your life. He gives each of us our human will, our free will. And he invites us to shape our human will according to him. In some of the last phrases, last sentences of the gospel, Jesus says, the gates of Hades, of hell, of the netherworld shall not prevail against you, Peter. For decades, I misunderstood that until in recent years I heard a speaker say, think about gates or doors. Have you ever seen a gate or a door charge and attack you? <laughs> gates and doors are hung on hinges. They are stationary. 
they don't move. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against you. <laughs> it's not that those gates are running against us and attacking us. That's not how they're going to prevail against us. They're fixed, they're stationary. You and I are to always acknowledge Jesus is our Lord, our God, our Savior. He's in control of everything. And I, I want to choose Him and His way. I want to follow who He has set up, His church. I want to follow the Holy Father. I want that to be the authority, the right that I choose. Sometimes people misunderstand the, what Jesus, when Jesus gives the keys, any binding and loosing, and some say that's power. Some think it's might. Some think it's who has the biggest stick, the largest weapons. It's really not might. It's the right to say. Who has the right to say? I don't think that any of us go to our barber to ask our barber questions about our automobile, how it's working or not working. I don't think we go to our accountant to ask our accountant how things are working in our body, our heart, our blood system. That's not the authority, the right to say for the barber to speak about automobiles, for the lawyer to speak about medical things. That's not their right. That's not the authority that they have. Who has the right, the authority to speak about spiritual things? God, who created everything that is. And God gave that power to the Holy Father, to that person, that office in the church that he set up, that is teaching what he has taught and continues to teach through the Holy Father, through the office. Your task, my task, is to open our heart to him, to submit our wills to the will of our Holy Father, the will of the church, to the will of God. And to know that we are to speak that message of God to all those that we meet, we are to go out and to announce that to other persons. And the gates of hell or of Hades of the netherworld, which are fixed in place, are not going to stop the words of God that the Holy Father speaks, the words of God that we are called to live and to speak in our daily lives. We are to let the Lord work in our hearts. Often, the words of Scripture, the teachings of the church are summed up in the collect of the Mass that the priest prays right before we sit down for the readings. In the collect this morning, the priest prays, O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. God causes, because he created everything that is, he's in control, he causes the minds of the faithful, you and I and all who are faithful to the Lord, faithful to his holy Catholic church, to unite in one single purpose, the will of God in heaven and on earth. When my will and your will is united for the single purpose with other persons in praising God, in obeying God, 
in living his word in what I say and do, that comes from God. You and I get to choose. Yes, I'm going to agree with what God causes with his grace. Oh God, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise. Mm, that's just God, just command him. He wants to have a big stick and control me. <laughs> God wants what's best for each of us. We are invited to love, to love what God commands and to desire what he promises. What does he promise? Eternity in heaven. And not just eternity in heaven, the joy here on earth when we are single-minded and hearted with him. Grant that your people to love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, uncertainties of this world. Some of you might have heard me say, share with you, months ago when this COVID first started, a good friend of mine shared with me a little quip that they found. What is the most useless purchase of 2019? the most useless purpose of 2019, a 2020 planner. <laughs> we are not in control amid the uncertainties of this world. Amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where True gladness is found. There's a whole lot of uncertainties around us in the world. Jesus is God. And he set up St. Peter. Changed his name from Simon to Peter because of his new office, his new position. And he gave them the authority, the right to say about spiritual things. And even if there have been popes down through the centuries who have not lived up to that office, Jesus continues that office, replaces that person in the office with another person. But amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. You and I are sent out from here after every Mass, into the uncertainties of the world to proclaim Jesus is my Lord, my God, my Savior. Who do I say Jesus is? My Lord, my God, my Savior. And I am going to choose in my mind to accept what he teaches, what he asks of me. I'm going to live that and I'm going to proclaim that to all those that I meet. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like St. Peter, may we recognize Jesus in our daily lives and trust that he will hear the prayers that we offer in faith. For the Church, that her leaders and members be mindful of serving the world in humility and faith, we pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may they place the needs and rights of the oppressed before those who are revered in society, we pray to the Lord that the church against which the gates of death cannot prevail will work with confidence to eradicate the injustices of abortion infanticide and euthanasia we pray to the lord that men and women may generously open their hearts to god's invitation to serve his people through the priesthood the religious life the true married life, and the holy single life. We pray to the Lord. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for the governments and people of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For our young people, May they be blessed with a safe and peaceful transition back to school in person or virtually. We pray to the Lord. For favorable weather and moisture, we pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us, may they find joy and honor as they enter into eternal peace with the righteous, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, for the people of our parish, and for our own intentions, united with Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints, we add in silence. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, God of infinite love and wisdom, we humbly ask you to hear these our prayers. Continue to keep us faithful to the humility of Christ, so that we may one day rejoice in the resurrection of the righteous. Help us to acknowledge Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We ask these prayers in union with the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. With expectation I have waited for the Lord, and he has cast his look upon me. He has heard my supplication, and he has put a new canticle into my mouth, a song to our God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton, Saint Bartholomew, Saint Louis, Saint Monica, Saint Augusta, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Take away the sins of the world, grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Catholics who will be receiving Holy Communion are invited to come up to the communion rail. If you're unfamiliar with the communion rail, please know that you may receive communion either kneeling at the rail or standing at the rail, either on the tongue or in the hand. If you are uh, living together in a family as husband and wife or a whole family, you may stand or kneel beside each other. Otherwise, please keep a social distance. After one group has received communion at the communion rail, the next group wait to come up until the ushers have uh, wiped the communion rail.
communion hymn is number 344, Humbly We Adore Thee. Humbly we adore thee, Christ Redeemer King. Thou art Lord of heaven, thou to whom we sing. God the mighty, thou hast come, bearing gifts of grace. Son of Adam, still thou art, Savior to our race. Jesus, Lord, we thank Thee for this wondrous bread. In our land thou dwellest, by Thee we are fed. We who share this mystery, in Thee are made one. Every act we offer thee in thy name is done. Thou who died to save us, livest as our light. Though our eyes are blinded, yet our faith gives sight. Christ, to the be merciful, one poor sinner slain. We in grief confess our guilt, cleanse our souls of stain. Christ, our God and brother, hear our humble plea. By this holy banquet, keep us joined to Thee. Make us one in loving Thee, one in mind and heart. Till in heaven we are Thine, never more to part. Hail the Word incarnate, born from Mary's womb. Hail thou, strength immortal, risen from the tomb. Share with us thy victory, Savior ever blessed. Live more fully in our hearts, be our constant guest. Faith alone reveals here, bread of paradise. Faith alone may witness Jesus' sacrifice. Therefore, Lord, as once of old, Thomas gained his sight. Now increase our people faith, shed thy healing The earth will be satisfied by the work of your hands, O Lord, as you bring forth bread from the land and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine and bread to strengthen man's heart.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. As the note in the narthex said, parishioners, if you picked up a missalette, please take it home with you. This is your missalette until November 28th. So bring it back with you next time you come to Mass. Visitors, there's a wicker basket there um, near that area where you picked it up. Please put it in there on the table. In the narthex, there's a bulletin. Please go outside. Stand outside. Don't run to the car. Stand and visit with other persons. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And close to you, bid me that with your saints I may be praising you forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The recessional hymn is number 318, To Jesus Christ, Our Sovereign King. <laughs> Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, all praise and homage do we bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, ruler, Christ Jesus, Lord, and Redeemer. Your reign extend, O King benign, through every land and nation. For in your kingdom, Lord divine, alone we find salvation. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, ruler, Christ Jesus, Lord and Redeemer. To you and to your church, great King, we pledge our hearts of nation. Until before your throne we sing, in endless jubilation. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, ruler, Christ Jesus, 